the U.S. Supreme Court has taken a dramatic step of overturning the landmark 1973 Roe v. Wade ruling that recognized a woman's constitutional right to an abortion and legalized it nationwide, handing a momentous victory to Republicans and religious conservatives who want to limit or ban the procedure. Good morning, I'm Sarah Sapsanama and these are the headlines of the hour. Most local levels present their budget for the upcoming fiscal year, agriculture, infrastructures, employment, health and education in the priority. Political parties busy employees despite evident irregularities in the judiciary. Impeachment motion against the Chief Justice remains stranded at the Parliament. The U.S. Supreme Court takes a dramatic step of overturning its 50-year-old Roe v. Wade decision that recognized women's constitutional right to abortion. U.S. President Biden describes it a tragic error. And Stefano Tsitsipas advances into the finals of Mallorca Open Tennis Tournament, defeating Benjamin Bonzi, sets up a clash against Roberto Bautista Agut in the title decider. Most of the 753 local levels have presented bu their budget for the upcoming fiscal year. Most of the levels have increased the size of their budget for the upcoming fiscal year and have prioritized agriculture, infrastructures, social development, education, health and tourism. Of the 276 municipalities and 460 rural municipalities, many have included programs reflecting local aspects. Having spent on measures to curb the coronavirus pandemic in preceding years, the local units now have prioritized the aspirations of the locals. Recently elected public representatives have made efforts to introduce new projects. Local levels of the Madhesh province have prioritized irrigation and increasing agricultural production. Meanwhile, in Sudur Paschim and Karnali, the local levels have stressed on creation of employment opportunities and cottage industries. Tourism and increasing production of medicinal herbs have also been prioritized. With the increase in grant from the federal government, the local levels have increased their budget as well. Despite the mandatory requirement of presenting the budget within the 10th of Assad, as per the Nepali calendar, a few local levels have yet to introduce their budget because of disputes and inadequate preparations. With an increased budget, all six metropolises have prioritized education, health, physical infrastructures and agriculture. With the highest budget among the local levels, the Kathmandu metropolis has allocated around 50% for infrastructures alone. Kathmandu Metropolis has introduced a budget of 25.41 billion rupees for the coming fiscal year. The metropolis's budget for the ongoing fiscal year was 18.95 billion rupees. The new budget has allocated a huge amount of fund for reconstruction of heritages, construction of roads, land acquisition, waste management, health and management of rivers. Meanwhile, the largest metropolis in the terms of geography, Pokhara has prioritized tourism and agriculture. Situation had grown intense for a while in Pokhara as CPN UML had staged a protest during the presentation of the budget. Another city rich in heritage and culture, Lalitpur, has prioritized heritage conservation and promotion of tourism and agriculture as it declared an estimated budget of 6.35 billion rupees. Elsewhere, Bharatpur has introduced a budget of 5.74 billion rupees where it has focused on agriculture, infrastructures, industries and social development. In the east, Biratnagar has presented a budget of 3.62 billion rupees by prioritizing industries and social development. Another industrial and trade hub, Birganj of Madhes province, has introduced a budget of 3.33 billion rupees. The sub-metropolises have also prioritized local infrastructures in their respective budgets. Now, in our Public Voice segment, we've asked people in several provinces what should be done to implement and execute the local-level budget. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Budget or Akonsa, this light Ambrosanga Logai Dinuboro. Budget Nikas of Time Mapo, and they can carry in Gonopoli Sodino. Only come in Bellamador got a Goribone, you tell some for noon. Total Pit Dabira and it is position Carnival Gunuposa. Carnival Hunek Halkai Hunuposa Pella budget. Exports or Badati, output Lira, input Lira. अनि बोल लो तेज़ मज़ी करने को अनुपर से जन प्रतिनिधि आखिर जिम्मेदारी होने पर हो
Now, reports of the Supreme Court itself have been identifying irregularities in the judicial system. At a time when an impeachment motion hangs stranded against the Chief Justice, alleging him of wrong practices in the court, the recent audio controversy has served as an evidence to the involvement of judges and law practitioners in unethical activities in the judiciary. With controversies related to the judiciary coming to the fore one after another, the Parliament has politicized these issues. Despite the lapse of a long time since the registration of an impeachment motion against Chief Justice Cholinder Samshe Rana, parliamentary proceedings have yet to begin in this regard. Main opposition CPN Yemal has been urging for taking the matter forward. It has claimed that resolving this issue would assist in addressing other recent complications seen in the judiciary. However, the ruling coalition does not seem in favor of concluding the impeachment motion anytime soon. Obstructions in the parliament and an unlikely two-third majority has laid the coalition to delay the process until the end of Rana's tenure, which would automatically close the motion. Meanwhile, even the executive has been turning deaf ears to the irregularities within the judiciary. Those holding leadership positions in the legal systems themselves have accepted the increasing financial irregularities within the judiciary. The recent audio leak of a conversation between a judge and a lawyer which involves legal officials to the Chief Justice has made such irregularities evident. In such a scenario, concluding the impeachment motion stranded in the parliament could help address several other issues. Price of food products have hiked around the world because of the Russia-Ukraine war. Despite being an agriculture country, Nepal still depends on agro-imports. And with the failure in ensuring optimal consumption of domestic producers, 30% of agriculture production goes to waste even before reaching the market. However, no entity has so far paid any attention in this regard. Of the 5.2 million metric tons of vegetables and fruits produced in Nepal, around 40 to 50 percent goes to waste. According to agriculture experts, delay in harvesting, poor storage facilities and lack of sound market management have led to this situation. They have further added that lapses in protecting the domestic agro-producers when the state is compelled to import fruits, vegetables and grains to meet the domestic demand is a consequence of the failure of the state mechanisms. While the population is consuming imported fruits and vegetables, domestic producers are being washed due to, wasted in fact, due to absence of sound storage facilities. It's time now for our segment Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. The question is, what should be done to avoid agricultural producers going to waste? Your options are A, manage storage, B, increase access to market, and C, cautious consumption. The voting is on, type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.